Recently, I had the pleasure to talk with Rudolf Mighty. And I just want to applaud him for having the courage to talk about his past. You know, my heart goes out for Rudolf Mighty because I knew that he genuinely wanted the opportunity to perform at his highest potential as a youth. And because of poor decisions, he now has to live with the regret what could have been. And I'm happy that he is able to find coping mechanism or ways to help him to deal with a situation that he put himself in as he made it clear because of ignorance and stubbornness. And I'm sure that his story will impact a lot of young people who today don't see the bright future because they don't think before they make good, sound decisions that can have a positive or a negative impact on their lives. I applaud Rudolf Mighty because it took courage for him to come forth and express how he truly feel about making mistakes or making a major mistake that had a negative impact on his athletic future. This is the reason why we encourage young people to think before you act. Because today you might think that you can deal with what is to come. But when the reality is here, you will find that thinking it, believing it, is totally different than actually living in it. Rudolf Mighty was one of schoolboy's greatest sprinter of all times. He had a mindset where he wanted to achieve his highest potential, but maybe he had lacked some knowledge, some emotional intelligence, and as a result of that, it cost him a very bright future. For those young people who are listening to this video right now, I hope that you will find it within to listen with an open mind and to see if you can pull any knowledge from what Rudolf has to share. He's now in a better place because his family is dear to him and he's able to have some relief because, as he said, when he watched Bolt competed over the years, he saw himself in Bolt. I appreciate the time that Rudolf Mighty took to talk to me and I wish him all the best in everything that he does. Let's go into the interview right now. Today, I have the pleasure to talk to Rudolf Mighty. Now, those who are affiliated with track and field would know that name. I competed against Rudolf in my time. He was a very hard candidate to beat. You know, he was one of the few athletes that forced me to look deep within myself in order to pull out whatever was there. Rudolph Mighty is an exceptional athlete. Before you had a UCN Bolt, you had a uh, Rudolph Mighty. Rudolph Mighty for Jamaica as a high school athlete set all the records in our time. And he was one of the few athletes to make an Olympic team in high school. Rudolf Mighty is here to share his story because it is our hope that he can transform some of the young developing athletes' mind into the champion that they desire to be. Rudolf Mighty, it is a pleasure to be talking to you today. How are you coping with this COVID situation? Hello, Gregory. Nice talking to you too. And, um... I am trying my best to stay out of the COVID way. I mean, I'm protecting myself and my family, and I'm doing okay. Mm. Well, I see that you have a few little beard gray like mine. It means that we are wiser. That's what I normally tell my son, that 
when you see this, it means wisdom. Yes, it is. <laughs> and I'm sure like a father, you to struggle with your sons to, to get them to understand that there are things that we did in our past that if we could turn back the hands of time, we would have done things in a much different way. Well, let me ask you a quick question, Rodolfo. You were an exceptional high school athlete. What was it that made you so great during your competitive years? I would mean now, growing up as a little youth from back in a, when I was like four or five years old, where I came from in Jamaica, we was always racing from top of the, um, the road to the bottom of the road. Like, you know, you have a, we have a road where we always race as a little kid growing up. Mm -hmm. So it's like we always are compete against each other, always running. And I was one of them kids who never liked to lose. I don't believe in losing. Mm -hmm. So it's like my mindset was so powerful that all times when I come out running. Mm. When you say mindset, break it down for me. Because you have a lot of young athletes who they don't have that competitive nature. You know, you talk about mindset and you talk about um, overcoming even self-doubt with that mindset. Could you kind of elaborate when you say that mindset? What differentiated you from, from the other guy that wanted to beat you? All right, like me now. First of all, before I right, say I'm going to run a race, I tell myself, say, I'm not losing this race. No matter what. So in my mind, I already run the race in my mind and done picture myself winning. Mm -hmm. So before even the race run, in my mind, I win the race already. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I go in that starting block now, in my mind, it's just win, 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 no matter what. I don't see nobody else but me in the race. That's it. <laughs> Refusing to lose. Do you ever have any doubt in your ability that maybe you might not be able to, to win this race? To be honest, no. No doubt. I, I never have any doubt about my ability because, as I said, as a little kid growing up, mm -hmm. I'm always competing in anything I do. Mm -hmm. Whether eating food is like who going to eat, who going to finish first. It's like in everything we just want to finish first. Yeah. So... My mindset was just always winning, first, no matter what. Mm. That's me. You were one of the few developing athletes to make an Olympic team. Could you tell us what the challenge was like for you for the senior championship, moving from a junior to the senior championship? And could you also explain what was it like to be on the Olympic team as a high school athlete? All right. I remember when I go to JC in 1989. And um, when I went to JC, I realized that the Olympics was in the next three years mm -hmm. or two and a half years, to say. And um, me coming from Waterford Secondary back at the, in, in, in them days, um, I remember when I was at Waterford, I used to tell my coach that um, I want to beat them high school guy. And them said, boy, if you work hard, if you work hard, you can do whatever you want or you can achieve whatever you want. So I remember when I went to GSC, you know, um, I tell Michael Clark, my coach was Michael Clark at the time at GSC. So I said to him that, coach, I want to make the Olympic team in 1992. So he said to me, if you work hard enough, at that time you would be like 18, 19. If you work hard enough, nothing is impossible. I said, all right, no problem. So with me now, most time, like in the morning before I go to school, I will go up on a like a two-hour run or a one-hour run, jog in the morning, do stuff on my own. And I stand, I used to do stuff on my own because I have a little journey now where within the next two years, I have to reach that journey. Mm -hmm. So I used to tell myself, say, you know, I will do whatever I have to do just to make that team. Mm -hmm. So when I go GSC, you know, I used to challenge a coach. Yeah, I used to challenge a coach. So everything comes from practice first. It's what you do in practice, you do at competition day. Mm -hmm. So 
I remember when coach used to tell me what to do and I used to do and I, and then I started learning, I started seeing new things because from Waterford to high school, it's two different training. So it's like you now I realized I was in a, a different environment and different coaching and this coach is a good coach. But I heard about him from St. Jago back then. And I said, all right. I tell myself, I'm not missing that training day. I'm going I'm to cheat myself out of practice. Whatever the coach tells me to do, I do it. And I also do it properly. Because in my mind, in my mind, you know, I challenge myself and I challenge the coach. So whenever he tells me something to do, I do it and I do it properly. Mm -hmm. You know, you have some athletes where yeah, they do them drills and they joke it out. And, you know what I mean? They mm -hmm. not take it serious. But for me, me have a journey. So me I stick by my part. Mm -hmm. You understand, Gregory? Mm -hmm. So I start doing the thing them properly. I remember one time when the coach, every Tuesday and Thursday, we have ills behind JC. You have a, you have a ill named Jackson behind JC. And I remember you have a part of the ill where we used to do like a 100 meter sprint, go up the ill. Great, great. You want to see mighty around the the 100 meter, I go up the hill. Farm well properly, me and my chest. Me just, I run the, the hills like I want to race me around. Me, me I visualize the race in my head, I go up the hill. Mm -hmm. Farm well, me, me and my chest. Sometimes the other guys in my practice, me, I look for me like them and say, Oh, I'm to the youth. But Peter, them know, say, in my mind, me have a journey. Mm -hmm. Me want. Uh, for the Olympics. So at that time, you have this guy, I go Calabar named Daniel England. I tell the coach, say, I want to beat the guy there. I remember, I remember a time too when I was going to Waterford. Um, my first time trying to make a Jamaica team to the character, character, character games. Mm -hmm. It was in character kit at, in Puerto Rico that year. No, Trinidad, Trinidad, yeah, Trinidad, Trinidad. And I remember Daniel England at that time was, he was the man at that time. Gregory, when I was at Waterford, me tell the coach that I want the guy there. Boy, the coach said, boy, mighty. The task, I want tough task, you know, but nothing is impossible. That's a coach. One thing I did the right thing, I will beat the guy there. You hear me think, Gregory? Mm -hmm. I want to beat the guy. I think about him. So I want him. I want to beat that guy. That's my mind. Yeah. Everything is coming from the mind of Gregory. Your mind powerful, no, Gregory? Yeah. Gregory, when they tell yourself something and tell yourself you're going to do it. So, Gregory, so, how did you deal with distraction? You have the goal, you know what you want, you have the mental strength. How did you deal with things that would distract you from achieving what you set out to achieve? Well, Gregory may not really make nothing distract me, you know, to be honest with you, you know. Because it's because I know what I want at that time. Mm -hmm. And then as a young kid growing up, I mean no things come in your way growing up as a little kid, you understand? Yeah. And sometimes temptation come your way and people will push your button. I just you have to know what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You understand? But me you now, me was one of them athletes. Eh? Me just love track and feel there, man. I just love running. I love it. You have to love the sports. Mm -hmm. You have to love the sports. Love it real bad like how me love it. <laughs> Gregory, sometimes you see me at work. I walk for my two pint, Gregory. With me, not me. Gregory, me walk like me a drop on my face, Gregory. So I stay up on my toe and I walk. I really love track. I walk and I walk and I walk like I'm running. I walk and I'm in the family too. I walk and I run. I walk and I run. I walk and I run. I farm out things. Plus, I always visualize how I'm going to run. Mm -hmm. I always visualize them things. Mm. Until it becomes a part of you. Everything that Yes. You Even at the bed when I sleep, Gregory. Sometimes I sleep and my foot is moving at the bed. <laughs> Gregory, you think that you're Gregory? Gregory. Why do you think I was different from everybody else? Yeah. Because that's the way I think. Like, I remember um, 20, 2016, I went to Jamaica and I went to that event, keeping a national stadium. And I was talking to Michael Clark, my, my former coach. 
And he was, he was talking about, um, what that little guy in you, the little fast one, we used to go Calabar and graduate now. Um, 400 guy, man. Yeah, 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 young, yeah, yeah. What name again? Yeah. I don't know um, you're talking. Um, Christopher Taylor. Christopher, yeah. So, I bring his name up. I say, Mr. Clark, why you have them looking money I run so fast? And in an hour time, I just be a strength work you give. Man said, boy, mighty first of all. Man said, you think you talented? Is this guy talented? So I asked him, what's the difference? He must say, boy, the things that the guy do was so amaze, amaze him. So I said, so the things that we do and me do never amaze you. Because remember, you know, we're on 306, you know. And the years that stand for no school couldn't have broke it. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean, him amaze you more than me? Oh, I don't know. It was just like, this guy is so, I don't know. But I said, Mr. Clark, the way you coach them now and coach with them is different. Mm -hmm. So may I tell him, say, if you give us the coaching that you're giving them now, imagine if you give it to us then, oh, me mm -hmm. that run, a matter of fact, without you giving no, no speed work to us. Mm -hmm. You understand? So my mindset was different, Gregor, and um, the journey to the Olympics now. That journey was a mission for me. Yeah. You understand? Because, as I said, I want to make that Olympic team. And it was a tough journey and it was a tough mm -hmm. channel, but I was up to the channel. Yeah. You know what I mean, Gregory? So, so, what really happened, Mighty? Because I look at the tape over and over and you were, you were traveling at a very high speed. What really happened that caused that injury? What do you think? I'm going to tell you something. You see, Glenn Mills, why well, that coach is unbelievable. Because I remember when I make the team. Remember, I know, I went as a reserve. Mm -hmm. I went as a reserve on that team, Gregory. And it's like, when I went on that team now, I mean, the coaches know that because at the trial, I run the 100 meter and the 400 meter. And I think I, I pull up in that 100 meter and I run seven, not 100. But them coach that Jamaica at that time, no, if I only run one event, it would have been much different. Yeah. So the man them say, make we carry. Well, couple guys never like it. Couple guys never, because a guy will run six, never go. Me get team spot. So it's like people never like that. But the J3 and the coaches know if me run one event, things will be different. Yeah. So look now, bam, we're going to, we're going to Europe now, we're on the European circuit. So Mr. Mill start coach me. So when Mr. Mill start coach me, Gregory is like, we turn a different animal. Greg, we turn a machine now because the stuff that when, when we never used to get a GSE, I'm getting it now. Because Mr. Clark, Michael Clark, don't believe in speed work at that time. And Glenn Mills was a speed factory. Yeah. So, Picture now, a quarter mile a sprinter, we never get any speed work now. Start get speed work. Me start go too fast, Gregory. Gregory, me I go like a machine, Gregory. Everybody not like it. They not like it. Even the man who win the 100 meter, first and second, me no want to call on him. Never like it. Then the want me from the team. So Glenn me say, Mr. Mill say, how can you don't want this guy on the team? And this guy moving like this. Look at the guy moving. Even, even, even the man who I bring the button, come give me. Gregory, me have to adjust my marker. Just him can't catch me. Mm. So, Glenn Mills now start giving me this type of training when I never used to get a GSC. I mean, you get a lot of speed work yeah. when I get some Mills. And it's like, my leg wasn't that strong enough. I mean, it's strong, but not strong enough. But that type of speed work. Oh, Gregory. Mr. Mill start, me start run different. Me just start to move. Me just start to move like a weird Greg. Me, me get so fast in a little short space of time. The man who hold me, Gregory. The little space of time, Mr. Mills hold me. Me just start run fast, 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 fast. So I saw me end up on the team now. Mm. Yes, them say the real mighty have come out of me by just getting the real speed work and 
you look at different look at different techniques than what Miss Amelia showed me. Mm. You know what I mean? So that transcend now seven upon the four by one to you. So I think because the different training, like the speed work I start getting, yeah. my leg wasn't strong enough to maintain that speed that I'm getting. So it caused my quad muscle to pop up. Mm. So if you watch the race though, when, when, when I was running, you can see that I felt it and I jumped and I didn't want to stop. Mm -hmm. And then it just threw me over on the track. Mm. So, so let me ask you this. How tough was it to recover from that injury in 1992 and still dominate the senior level? Did it create any doubt in your mind or did you lose your level of commitment, your motivation? Did you have a different mindset? What, after that injury, what, what would you say happened to you? I Greg, I want to tell you, to be honest. It never changed my mindset. It just made me get more determined. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I left Jamaica and I went to um, Johnson City, Tennessee to train with Michael Green, coached by Riff, um, Mark Black. While I was there, I explained to the coach what happened in 1992. And he said, all right, don't worry, mighty. 96, Atlanta. We're going to get you ready. And... Um, I never, I never lose focus. Never lose focus. And I was more determined than ever to come back stronger than how I used to be. And it's like, I remember trying to come to Jamaica for the, um, for the trials, for 96 Olympics. And it's like, at that time, my visa was expired. And I was trying to get a visa to come to the trial, and it didn't work out. As I remember talking to Minister of Sports at the time, and um, I won't call no name, um, and then said he couldn't help me. And then I remember trying to talk to um, the J3, as again, I don't want to call a name. I spoke to certain people, the head person of the J3, and it's like, same question. So it's like, I missed out on 96 Olympics and I was in good shape. Because if you could remember, my, I, was, I was training with Michael Green and he made it to the final. I don't remember what he came in the final, but he made it to the final. And I remember he was my training partner. And I'm the one who push him, push him, push him every day in practice. So can you imagine if I did get a chance to come to Jamaica? Mm -hmm. What would happen? Mm. Well, let me ask you this because I know you still have the passion and the zeal because we have conversations, you know. In terms of how your career unfolds, do you have any regrets? Oh, Lord, Gregory. A regret? Oh, Gregory, I have many regrets, Gregory. Many regret. A lot of times I cry a lot of eye water, Gregory. Gregory, I remember one year I come to Pedro's, I watch you run. Gregory, I remember one year, I don't remember which year it was. I remember you was running the um the anchor leg. Michael Jans was on your leg. Gregory, I couldn't watch the race, Gregory. Gregory, I sit in the stand crying and my foot shaking like Gregory, my leg does a shake, 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 shake. Can't watch a race, Gregory. Come here and tell myself, say, look, man, make sure that I don't this with my friend. Them. I should be on that team. Gregory, I remember watching you at the Olympics, Gregory. Getting that uh, bronze medal, right, Gregory? Yeah, yeah. Gregory, you know what? Time tears come in my eyes, Gregory. I'm watch you run, Gregory. Regret, Gregory? Oh, God. I got a lot of regret, baby. Trust me. If, and, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do the interview with you, Rudolph, is because I feel like your story was never told. I feel like you have a lot to share with some of the younger guys who, even a Christopher Taylor, who really don't see the big the vision 
really don't understand how talented he is. And well, Andre, Reggie? Yes. I did spoke to Christopher Taylor. I remember um, probably three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. He came to New York. He came to New York. I never know it was New York. And I went to a barbecue. Him and one of his teammates, his teammate family member live in New York. Mm -hmm. And he was there with his friend. And um, I went to the barbecue. And when I went to the barbecue, you know who up in up? Christopher Taylor. The barbecue was so packed. Very good. I had to hold the mic. I had to go to the DJ booth. Very good. I took the mic from the DJ. I made everybody know in the barbecue. So we have a star in the place. We have a star and we have a celebrity in the place. That's what, that's what I did in the barbecue. Very good. After take the mic and make everybody know, say, hello. This is Christopher Taylor is here. You know Christopher Taylor? The fast little high school boy. Jamaica will come up and raise and mash up the place. See him right here. Yes, Gregory. I spoke with Christopher Taylor and gave him a lot of advice. A lot of advice. I don't know how you took it. What advice would you say? The same advice that you gave him that you think young people, young athletes, aspiring athletes, what would you say to them that would make a difference? First, I told him. I said, Christopher, he was a talented guy. But the talent alone now the work. You know what I mean? You have to motivate it. You have to hungry. You have to want it. And you have to take it. You understand? Meaning, you have to work hard. Get your mind ready. And tell your mind at all times. Always tell yourself so you're going to do it. That comes first. Got the mind powerful. You have to tell yourself so you're going to do it. And never lose focus. Never lose focus. That's what I'm telling you. So, for the younger generation, we are run track and field. Them of us want it, they are dirty. Mm -hmm. And hungry. And disciplined. And don't lose focus. And always tell yourself you're going to do it. And always think down the road. Mm -hmm. Think long term. Here is my my thing. I know that I can't turn back the under time. So what I do by condition in my mind is to say that the next four years from now, I am going to make sure that I see everything, I take the right steps because the outcome, these are the outcomes that I would like to achieve. If you had the opportunity to go back to being 18 and 19 year old, <laughs> What are some of the things you would do differently? Different. To be honest with you, Gregory, the only mistake that I see I made is when I came to America. When I came to America and decision, I remember when I was, away, when I was in Tennessee training. I remember making a stupid move because of ignorance and um, don't want to listen. So, oh my God. Mm. Gregory? You have to just stay focused on Gregory. That's all I'm saying. You got to stay focused and just believe in what you want and go get it. Yeah, you see, Mighty, one of the things I found that when I came to the U.S., I made so many different sacrifices people wouldn't know. There were times when the day seemed very lonely. You did not have the support. I didn't have the support the way I wanted it to. And as a result, I had to make up things as I go along. When it comes to support, what advice would you give to some of these young people in terms of having the right people in your corner, getting the right information, being disciplined, being humble? What are some of the advice would you give to some of these young people? You have to just stay focused. Don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose. Don't lose focus. And just, because um, I remember when I was in Tennessee, to be honest with you, I had the right support. I had the right support. It's just that 
I was just stupid, dirty. Because I remember when I left Tennessee and come to New York, I remember Michael Green called me and told me, sir, mighty, had the biggest mistake you ever made. That's what he told me. He told me that was the biggest mistake I, I make when I leave Tennessee, come back to New York. Because I was young and stupid and ignorant. Never want to listen. I mean, I listen. But sometimes, I don't know, I just get crazy. I don't know if the way I grew up or I brought up or what, I don't know. But the younger guys, we don't have to just stay focused. Sometimes you have things in your part or coming your way. You have to just know how to get around it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to have days where you don't want to do anything. You got to have tough times. But them tough things then will make you stronger. Yeah. So my advice for you younger guys who don't have any support or who have the support, you have to just don't lose focus. Yeah. Just fear. You know what I mean? Humble, listen, and always make goals. Yeah. Because trust me, you don't want the regrets that me have. Yeah. So how do you deal with some of these regrets? Well, I agree. Okay. Uh, me can't tell you. They regret them sometimes when I think about them, Gregor, I'll be a cry, I cry. Enough time I'm there by myself, Gregor. And I'll me like watch the Olympics or stuff on the TV. Especially you, because you, Gregor, I'm proud of you, Gregor. You don't know I'm proud of you, Gregor. Gregor, many a time I see a Gregor and water come out of my eyes. Gregor, yeah. you make water come out of my eyes. Enough time I see you run. Because I see you try. Because I know it's a hard work, kind of Gregor. Yeah. Yeah, I know he's a hard worker. He'll come like me, Gregory. But it's just that said, you may have more. You didn't want it more than me. Me the two spoil. Put it like that. <laughs> you see, you see, Rudolph, here's this thing. I come from Seaview Gardens, right? And there was no other way for me. Like, say, staying in Jamaica was not a good option for me because I wanted to help my family. And because of that, most of the time, we have to, to endure some of the worst situations. But one of the things I also learned is that each decision that you make will lead to something good or something bad. And this is why my goal has always been to think before I act, try to get as much reasonable advice as I could before I make a decision, because sometimes when you make decisions in before the, thinking, in yeah. the emotional state of mind, yes, yes, you normally make the wrong choice, and that's what I did, Gregory. That's what I did. I made the wrong choice. Made the wrong choice yeah. at the moment when I was in my rage. You know what I mean, Gregory? Yeah, yeah. So regret, Gregory. <laughs> yeah, more time, more time. Since I've been in New York, Gregory, I've been to places where guy, sports come up, track and field come up, guy talking about me and I'm right there and they're not even know what I'm Gregory. I'm going to stand up and listen to them and they still me leave and I say, if me go somewhere and the conversation come up and I'm talk about me and I'm talk, I'm talk, I'm listen, I'm listen. Sometimes I walk away. And then the guy who me and him go to the place, he will say, you know, say, I demand that. And the man them say, yeah. And them say, you know, so me I look on him face and him face look familiar, but I say, well, I demand that. Yeah, most time when the conversation comes, Gregory, my work with. Tough. Tough, Gregory. Tough, Gregory. Tough. You know, and this is why we are saying to the young people that it is best to live your life with no regrets because sometimes the burden can be so overwhelming. <laughs> And it will take months, maybe years. Years, years, Gregory, years. With that. I'll leave you with the final words, Rudolph. No, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Yes, yes, Gregory. You know, sir, um, you say both ease up my pain, Gregory. Explain. Gregory. From me, from, from, from me leave high school and never do what I'm supposed to do. And then Mr. Many at least come along. I suffer Paul, many of them come along. Me just never see nobody like me. What me can say, yeah, I mean that. Until Mr. Bowl company see. 
But I said, whole company see me, I said, me and him. So I said to myself, say, oh, my God. I said to myself, say, oh, I don't want you special. Because before me, me used to always hear about the great one that come, leave Jamaica, come America. And then you know you're not about them. Me used to always hear. Me never knew that that reached me. So it's like, when it reached me, you know, and me said to myself, say, God, me tell myself, say, me used to tell myself, say, me don't want anything that reach me. So, when me say bold company see now, and me ask to myself, say, wait, me say mighty I run. The first time me say bold run in person is when him come to New York at the Grand Prix. Some, I must say, as Adidas meet or something like so. But every time me try to go close to him, to introduce myself to meet him, me just can't meet him, man. Me just can't meet bold. So, me see man company see him, and him, him all demean and the race and the, the way my go on, I tell myself, say, yeah. Me I tell to myself, say, see me there. Gregory. <laughs> me say, see me there. And that me I said to myself, no, Gregory, me see the man in the Gregory. Yeah. And the way, the way him run, it just remind me of when I went to the Olympics and Mr. Mills was giving me the technique and how you can't overstride. And the look at things that when Mr. Mills to me, I see it in the boat. Yeah. I run. I mean, I said, look for me, I run. When the man said, that, when he run the nine, 9.76 or something like so. Me say, look for me. So, Gregory, when Bolt come along, Bolt make me stop crying. You will see him, Bolt make me stop crying at water. Yeah. Because I says, all right, somebody come and ease the pain. Yeah. That's yeah. how much they love the sports. Yeah. And I still love the sports. Yeah. Because sometimes I talk to my older son. I have two sons now. In, not, not, I got two sons, my older kids, in... One is in Arkansas, um, Arkansas, but he's more in the book work. And then, um, yeah, the other one in, um, 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 in school, in go, um, North Carolina, at and You know that school? Yeah. Yeah, that's where he is. And he coached by some Jamaican, and the Jamaican coach, I don't remember his name, but he's, he's doing a good job down there. You call him Boogie? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember his name, but he's doing a good job. Guys, he, he have a good set of guys down there. Yeah. And, uh, Every time the NCA, I watch it. So I always look out to the school to see yeah. what the coach like. They might have some good girls and some good guys. But my son is now my problem that I have with my son. Because I tell him, this guy now, no care what I talk to my son, Gregory. He's like, he listen, but I don't know if it's going, he does ready stand on it. Every time I call my son, the man always have like girls, you know what I mean? Girls, girls, girls. I tell him, so them things are distraction. Because I remember, Going to GSE as a high school guy. Gregory, a lot of girls used to come at me. But me never used to try to mix up with a girl because me not like to lose and me have a journey and me have, you know what I mean? My focus on what I want. So girls wasn't nothing to me. Them come like nothing because I know them things are a distraction. Yeah. And I care what I talk to the little kid is like, well, Gregory, them kids are nowadays, some of them, I don't know. These, 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 Younger generation come up with a difference. Because since Bolt since Bolt retire, Greg, look how much good one out of Jamaica. Greg, look how much good one, just like me, good ones come out of Jamaica. From Bolt retire, you know. I'm Bolt retire about three years now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't see nothing happen. I don't see nothing happening. They're not, they're not hungry no more. And it look like say, if Bolt, Bolt never do what I'm supposed to do, these guys, you wouldn't see no gold medal. You want to see no world record. They're not hungry like old Bolt. They're hungry. Mm. And look, the same thing with Bolt. Look, me used to do. Because he's a party guy. Back then, when I go to high school, I used to go to. I'm going to make a party and do the same thing with Bolt. Do. I used to do it too back then. When I see him, I tell him, I say, when I see him, I see me. Because the same thing with him, do, I used to do it. Mm-hmm. But what? That not stop me from stay focused yeah. and do my training. I'm hungry. You mean, Gregory? You have to just live your life to the fullest, you know? And that's what me never do. Mm-hmm. I was just too young and ignorant. So I can't even too blame anybody but myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's myself that me, me stopped running. I was just young, stupid. Put it like that. I have good people in my corner, but I was a tough, tough nut to crack. Yeah. <laughs> Gregory? But as you say, you live and you learn. And things, sometimes in life, things happen for a reason. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, man. Well, it's tough, Gregory. You know, I can just imagine, Rudolph, because I know living with regrets 
it prevents you from seeing the future the way you want to and the type of internal happiness that you see. But you, what final thought do you have for these young youths who still want to achieve their high potential, but they get caught up in the material things, they may get caught up in all these little, little things. What advice do you have, final thought, that could help them? Y'all need to wake up out of the dream. This, 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 this hype thing that don't work, materialized thing that comes and goes. And I mean, Gregory, so you know, they have to stay focused, as we say. Plan, as we say, is a long journey. So you, 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 you think about your journey where you want and give yourself, like what you said earlier, like you know, said so the Olympics are the next four years or whatever in the next four or two years, you work at it. Stay focused. And look, remember, your mind is very powerful. Yeah. Always tell yourself first. And it starts from in practice. So you guys who listen to me, remember, I'm going to tell you, it starts from practice. And don't cheat yourself like in you know, the workout and the drills. You have to visualize it in you know, your head before you even start doing it. Mm. And you just picture how perfect you want to run. Like, or any sports where you do. Or anything where you want to do in life. You have to visualize it. And you have to love it. And you have to want it. And think about ahead and think about the nice material things that you want down the road and I get older. Mm. Well, I mean? It is a pleasure to talk to you. This platform is open to you any time of the day that you need to express your thoughts. It is my pleasure to have you here. We are about creating individuals with the mind, the mind of a champion, the mind that you have, yes. the mind that gave you a sense of purpose and direction. So I really thank you for taking the time to be on the series and I will keep in touch if you have anything else you want to share the floor is yours remember guys always the mind powerful 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 mind powerful something you have up here never doubt yourself never always tell yourself you're going to do it and work at it and you will get here so till next time Gregory nice you know my brother long time to see you is it yes man <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm good my brother <laughs> All right, my boss. I'll talk to you later. All right, give thanks. Uh, respect. Yeah, man.